Hey guys, today we're going to talk about who makes who. In other words, what brands own what brands. And we're going to do it in segments, uh, in sections. The first section will be FMIC. Today we're using the classroom at McKnight Music Academy, my music academy. I'm using their chalkboard. I've erased a bunch of the music today. Hopefully when the teachers come this afternoon, they don't need that. So FMIC. FMIC owns Fender. Now Fender is like Ibanez. It's a brand not a company. FMIC is the company, which is Fender Musical Instrument Corporation, but still, like Ivan is a Sashino, Fender is FMIC. FMIC owns Fender, then they acquired Squire. Now, Squire was originally a string company. We're not going to go into the whole history, we just want to talk about what's relevant today, so let's talk about what they did. Then Fender acquired the Armand. And then they acquired uh, Sun. Remember Sun with two ends? Right? I'm making some, but it's Sun. Sun, and they made bass amps and PAs and stuff. And then they acquired Guild. And when they acquired Guild, they uh, started making them in their uh, factory in Fender in California, and it wasn't going over well. So they hired the guy who ran Guild before, and first thing he said was he wanted his own factory. So they bought Tacoma. Tacoma was an acoustic company in Washington. And they moved Guild to Tacoma, taught the employees how to do set necks and shiny finishes, shiny finishes instead of the satin and bolt-on necks. They acquired then Charvel Jackson from a company it was not Jackson, because Jackson had sold it previously. So they had Charvel Jackson, Guild, Tacoma. Then they acquired SWR. To... Now you can see where they're going with this, right? They want to be able to go to a music store like Guitar Center or a Palm Pop and say, hey, PA systems is sun, you know, pickups and, uh, and, and, and hollow bodies and basses. The Armin, we have Squire for your students, we have Fender for obviously for everything, for Manchester Guitars, Gillis for high-end acoustics, Tacoma's for other high-end acoustics, SDR for high-end bass amps, metal guitar players by Red Jackson. And then they kept going with this. So then they didn't, uh, they didn't, they were ghost building guitars called Benedetto. They were like $12,000 hollow bodies. And uh, they came up with the idea of Bill Schultz, who's passed away, he was the, the president of Fender at the time. He came up with the idea, I guess, to merge somehow with Gretsch. Gretsch is not owned by Fender. How Gretsch works is Fender is the distributor of Gretsch. How that works is you have a grandma, she has a famous pumpkin pie recipe, you want to make it. You you can make it at home, but what you do is you go to what they call a commercial kitchen. You go to them and say, hey, here's the recipe, I need thousands of, of, of pies, and then send them to these uh, these stores. And that's what a commercial kitchen does. That's what Gretsch is. Fender, is, Fender FMIC, is Gretsch's commercial kitchen. They take the recipe of Gretsch and then they make it in Korea, Japan, China, and then of course they have some limited models in their American facility and they make Gretsch for Fred Gretsch the third, or he might be the fourth, um, and they do a commercial kitchen. That gave them the idea, I'm sure, to do EVH. EVH is the same thing. Eddie Van Halen's brand is another commercial kitchen. It's Eddie Van Halen's brand, but Fender, FMIC, is the manufacturer and distributor of it. Okay, so this is how this works. Well, they were missing something. They had an accessory division and it wasn't doing very well. And so what they did is through this, through this time, they decided to shelve these two brands. So when you shelf a brand, right, um, what that means is you own the brand, but you're never gonna use it again, or you can use it at a later time. So they shelved the Armin and Sun. Um, mostly because it was probably redundant. They probably had a lot of duplicate products. Sun was actually, a lot of the Sun amps were Fender amps and a lot of the Arm and stuff was now being switched over to Guild. They could put a better brand name of Guild on the DeArmin guitar. If you'll notice, uh, DeArmin had the Ashbury bass and then you can Google search right now and see that there's a Guild version of that bass. And a lot of DeArmins, there's Guild versions of them. That's what they did. They just took the brand Guild and put it on the DeArmin stuff. They took the Fender brand and put it on the Sun stuff. And uh, those brands had more clout with this product lines. Then they needed distribution for picks, strings, and stuff. So they bought a company called KMC. Now KMC is short for Command, K-A-M-A-N, Musical Corporation. Command makes helicopter parts and stuff, but also owned a music division, and it owned brands like Ovation, which is also Applause, and uh, Hamer, remember those back in the day? And Genspins, which high-end bass amps. Jeff Ginsler's company in Scottsdale, Arizona. And they are the sole, they are the, basically the commercial kitchen of Takamini. So they didn't own Takamini, but they pronounced Takamini, spelled Takamine, spelled Takamine, but I think it's Takamini. Uh, and then there's a couple other, oh, and here's what's interesting. 
Fender had distribution for Gretsch guitars, but believe it or not, KMC outbid them for Gretsch drums. So the drums, the soup kitchen, not soup kitchen, the commercial kitchen for the drums was KMC, the guitars was Fender, and then when Fender bought KMC, they got both. So then they decided to move around some stuff, and what they did is the first thing they did is they moved Charvel over to KMC. They kept this all separate, okay? Um, so KMC is separate from the, the FMIC side. Tacoma, when they bought KMC, they shelved Tacoma. And the reason is, the reason is, is because the Ovation factory was in Connecticut and it made Hamer Ovation and they could move Guild over here and use the hollow body Hamer's uh, guitar employees that build Hamer hollow bodies to build the Starfires again for Guild and then build all the uh, acoustics for Guild as Ovation. So they moved it over there. Now this was their plan. They're going to have multi-brands and do all this stuff. So here's where it changed. The new ownership of FMIC changed the direction and said, hey, let's get rid of KMC. So they sold KMC off. Now KMC they bought for $117 million, so they didn't get that for it. So they had to uh, kind of cut the pain a little bit. So uh, I don't know who got Gretsch drum distribution. It still could be KMC. I don't know. Takamini left and went to ESP. So it's distributed by ESP now. Ovation Applause and was sold to Gibraltar Drums. So that's who got them. And when that factory was sold, or when that company was sold, they shut down the factory. And then Fender sold the Guild name to Cordoba, getting rid of that. Uh, Hamer Guitars was included, and Jens Benz were included in the deal with KMC. Charvel was brought back over to the Fender side. KMC was all bought by Jam. We'll talk about Jam later. And then Fender returned to its... Uh, oh, SWR was shelved. Because they didn't need it anymore. Because they, they decided the market was really strong enough for a base, they could just keep Fender. So, what Fender did was they said, okay, we have FMIC, has Fender Squire, and Charvel Jackson. They own it. And they distribute EVH, and they distribute Gretsch. So that is who Fender is now. So Fender is just basically Fender Squire, Charvel Jackson, four brands, and distribution of EVH Gretsch. And the logic being that this Fender logo has so much power, they don't want to divide and conquer. So that's why these brands had to go, because they bought these brands thinking they would grow the market, but what they really realize is right now, for the market's sake, Fender is the dominant force, so keep Fender. So that is... Who makes who in the FMIC part of the world? <laughs> Let's do number two, Jam. Now Jam is a, an outfit in Canada, and they own companies like J. Terser and some other brands. We won't get into that just because I want to get into this part. They acquired their first big acquisition was U.S. Music. U.S. Music was uh, Washburn, Eden, Parker, Randall, um, um, God, I want to say Soundtech, but it wasn't. It, was a, it doesn't matter. It's a shelf brand. They had a PA brand. They shelved it. Um, Washburn would also have Lion with an I and Oscar Schmidt. Um, okay. Uh, and so that's their brand. Oh, and then uh, Hagstrom. But, ready? They have distribution for Warwick in the U.S. Oops, that's a war. Warwick, that's good. Close enough. And Marshall. So here's what they did. They sold Eden to Marshall. Marshall now currently owns Eden for bass amps and Natel for drums. So Marshall now distributes itself or takes care of itself. Now my understanding is they're still using some kind of warehousing for this, but this is where Marshall is. Marshall owns these three brands. So if you buy Eden, Natel, or Marshall, you're buying the Marshall brand. Okay, so so you have Jam owns J. Terser, Washburn, no longer Eden, Parker, Randall, Hagstrom, and Warwick is distribution, so they have rights to it. Then they got um, a Supro. I don't know if they own it or distribute it, but they have access. They're, they're where you get it. And then, 
they bought KMC, which gave them Hamer and Jens Benz. Now, what's interesting about Jens Benz is because Fender sold Jens Benz, they let Jeff Gensler go. He's now got Gensler basic application again. So Gensler's back in play again. So there's going to be two Jens Benzes, Jens Benz and Gensler. It'll be interesting to see what happens. Okay, so that's this powerhouse brand. So when you buy these brands, <laughs> right? Uh, Super Pro. Um, you're buying from this company. Plus, they also own, uh, believe it or not, um, Jasmine, which was a company that was owned by uh, uh, Takamini, but it sold it to KMC So because they own KMC. So this will be a short one. Uh, we already discussed Hashino owns Ibanez and they own ta Tama drums. So Hoshino is Ibanez and Tama. That's the only two companies they own, and that's pretty much what they've owned since the dawn of time. Tama was picked up somewhere, I don't know, along the way, let's say the 80s or 90s, but obviously Ibanez is from the get-go. Um, and Ibanez uh, is funny because what people don't understand is there's Hashino. I don't know how to spell it. Hashino. Uh, Close. I used to write checks to him. I don't need more, so. Uh, well, I do, I guess, actually. It's automatic now, so I don't have to write the check anymore. So anyways, Hashino is Ibanez and Tama. Now, that's the only brands, right? Um, but it's not, that's not important. What's important is Ibanez. Ibanez is a Spanish name. Ibanez. If you ever, everyone will know, we all call it Ibanez. It's pronounced Ibanez. Uh, you know, it's Spanish. Um, it's because there was a company in like the 1700s, 1800s called Ibanez. And it was in Spain. And they made classical guitars. And Hoshino started ghost building for them. And the reason was, was uh, Europe was not into Japanese made guitars. Um, especially if they were called Hoshinos. No brand has ever had Hoshino as far as, far as I know. Um, so uh, they did Ibanez. What happened was he got into debt with Hoshino. In other words, they were supplying guitars he wasn't paying for them. They took him to court and they won his company. They got his name and they kept it. Later in the 1900s when they went to the U.S. and later started making dreadnoughts and then of course made the lawsuit era guitars and stuff that we know. Um, they just kept the name because they thought it was more relevant, plus they had you know reputation for it. So that's where Ibanez comes from. Uh, Tama, I have no idea. <laughs> I'm not a drummer. This last one, we're going to talk about Guitar Center. Because <laughs> why not? Okay, so Guitar Center owns uh, Music and Arts. That could be Arts and Music. I can't even remember how to say it. Musician's friend. Music one, two, three. Uh, there was a guy named, I think his name is Keith Brawley. He was a vice president at Fender. He had a short time, he had a company called Brawley that made guitars and basses. Uh, Guitar Center hired him, and I apparently what I understand is, well, I, the rumor I heard was to hire him, they had to buy up his, his, his inventory and sell it through, and then they bought his... Uh, his designs and stuff. That's where uh, Laguna comes from. So they own Laguna. Laguna guitars. They own Roadrunner cases. That's them. So if you own that stuff, that's their brand. They own Acoustic. They bought the name Acoustic and they started making acoustic amps. That's why if you notice the independent dealers uh, cringe when you bring them in is because we don't know what the value is because they sell them in build them so you know they have them sourced uh they don't own b52 but they have pretty much the ex a strong exclusive on it but um but they don't own it um and musician's friend is owned by them musician's friend owns harmony central <laughs> you know where we used to go online for reviews that used to happen and uh What's the other brand? They have a bunch of little cheapy brands too. You probably noticed on Musician's Friend. Because again, Guitar Center's Musician's Friend, Musician's Friend has some cheapy brands as well that you know, you know, you know what they are. They're always on sale. There's those little weird name brands um, that's not relevant. Uh, Laguna guitars are relevant because Laguna was Brawley. Uh, Roadrunner is probably a case manufacturer uh, that they, they buy a lot from and they said, hey, put our brand on it. It saves money. Acoustic uh, is rumored to be built by Behringer, I don't think that's true, but I just think it's, you know, whoever will build them the stuff the cheapest. So that's when you're buying from these companies, 
you're buying from Guitar Center. That helps. Do I did Guitar Center? Mine's with Sam Ash. Sam Ash. Okay, Sam Ash owns Samson. Mm, doing it wrong. Samson. Samson owns Zoom, which is Sam Ash. Larry Harkey, I think, sold Harkey to Sam Ash. They own Harkey. Anyone else wants to dispute this, it's you could be right or wrong. All I know is this. I physically carry these brands in my store, and I write a check. I know who I'm writing it to. Zoom and Harkey, I write a check. Samson. Samson is owned by Sam Ash. That's how checks flow. Um, and uh, then they own uh, Car Carlos Rebelli. I can't even do it. Rebel uh, some words. Okay, so uh, Sam Ash is these brands, uh, which is great because, you know, but here's the interesting part. Uh, that's a fact. I'll tell you the rumor. The rumor is that Sam Ash owns Samson uh, Audio because uh, 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 St. Louis Music had, had Mackie, and Mackie wouldn't sell to Sam Ash because they had a deal with Guitar Center, and so they got Samson. So that's how that works. And the same thing with Ampeg. In fact, that's we'll we'll finish with that one. Let's finish with St. Louis Music. That's another wacky one. There, St. Louis Music SLM was Alvarez was oh it'll turn on I promise. Uh, which is Yuri Acoustics, and then uh, Crate. Hey, remember those guys? Crate got to do it all caps like they used to do it. Crate, Crate. They uh, West Tone. Remember West Tone? Guitars. Series 10. Series 10. You probably don't even remember those guitars. Uh, series 10. And then Audio Centron. God, these are old days. This is all back in the hey, Centron. Centron. And they acquired Ampeg, which was their big. Okay. Then last, they got Mackie. No, that's lied. Uh, they never got Mackie. That's where I'm getting confused. Okay. This is a brand. Okay, you can imagine the '80s dies. They shelve West Tone and Series Ten. Those go away. Okay, and Audio Centro, and then go back to its roots, the trifecta, right? Ampeg, Crate, and Alvarez. Then St. Louis Music Company. They get acquired by a company called Loud. Loud was an investment company that bought Mackie. They're the ones that took it overseas in China. They buy Mackie, does so well, they come over here, buy St. Louis Music Company, then they add Mackie to the list. Then the recession comes and some bad management comes, and so what they decide to do is they sell Alvarez off to another company. Then they sell St. Louis Music Company off, which, because you know why, that, that, that sounds weird, but St. Louis Music Company was like KMC, they sold picks and, and strings and stuff, so, you know, and reeds and stuff. You gotta understand, like, reeds and all those little band orchestra things, those have to get to these music stores. So these, these companies like KMC, and, Sa and Davin Hanser and St. Louis Music sell that stuff. So Loud just goes, hey, you know what? We're Crate, Mackie, Ampeg. That's what we're all about. Then St. Louis Music Company, the company who buys that, buys back Alvarez. So they come back. So Alvarez is back in St. Louis Music Company's hands, which, whatever that means. Then, of course, they shell Crate because no one buys Crate anymore. And so now Loud is just Ampeg, Mackie. Oh, and I think they're Martin Audio as well. Uh, but that's a high-end, not for music stores kind of thing. So that's how that look goes. All right, guys. One last one for fun. Last one will be Korg. Because that's a, a one that comes up a lot, too. And keep this in mind. Anything I'm telling you guys, if you think I'm wrong or somebody out there knows something that, that, that may be more accurate, the only thing I could be wrong about is I might be wrong if I said they own something and they distribute it or if they distribute it and they own it. I'm pretty sure I'm right on every account, but it could slip through that the, you know, one company is only a distributor when I think they're the owner or vice versa, but I, I bet I'm not wrong, but if I am wrong, it's only in that. Korg. Korg owns Korg, right, which is tuners and keyboard stuff, and then they bought, then they were the distributor, let's tell the story correctly, then they were the distributor of Marshall, this is back in the day. So Marshall is, what is wrong with me? Marshall. Marshall um, is built to own, or not built to own, uh, they're just in time manufacturer, they build to order. So you order it, and so in the US, it's tough for a dealer, besides maybe Guitar Center, to order enough Marshall to have it shipped over and, and be, uh, uh, make sense. So Korg became their distributor Marshall. So if you bought a Marshall in the US as a dealer, you were buying it through Korg. So Korg sold Marshall and Vox. Remember, Vox was owned by Marshall? Marshall and Vox. And then through this interaction, Marshall didn't value the Vox anymore. They valued Marshall. So, the, so Vox was sold to Cork. So Cork owns Vox. Okay. 
So, so they distribute Marshall, but they own Box. Okay. And to this day, that's the correct. Uh, and then through this arrangement, when the recession happened, I don't know what happened, but uh, you know, Marshall left or Korg kicked him out or whatever. Uh, I got the impression Marshall left. Marshall left. And what happens when a company like Korg, who sells keyboards and tuners and stuff and amps, they're used to selling those Marshalls. So what they did is they became the distributor of Blackstar. So currently, if you are a dealer, you buy Blackstar through Korg, Fox, right? And then they started making Vox guitars, it didn't go over so well, so they uh, started a company called Lag. I'm pretty sure they own the company, but if not, they are the distributor of it. So if the owner distributor, it doesn't matter, Lag. So now Korg is Vox, Blackstar, Lag. That is, the, that is how you get those products. So that's, that's their connection. They don't own Blackstar, they distribute. And I'm pretty sure they distribute Lag, but they could own it, I don't know. But they do own Vox. I hope that helps. Okay, I hope you had fun in this video. Um, last ones, they're going to be easy, so I'm just going to give them to you real fast. Uh, is PV. PV owns uh, Buddha. Trace Elliott. Uh, composite Acoustic, which is a composite. Uh, you get the idea. Composite Acoustic. And uh, that's it. So that's their main brand that they own. And so that one's easy. And then, last but not least, we'll do Gibson. Because Gibson's fun. Gibson owns Baldwin. Yep. Wurlitzer. Kramer. I don't know why I'm doing it that way. Kramer. Steinberger. They own interest in Tenoy. Uh... Uh, the uh, Onkyo, and uh, Epiphone, of course, right? Everybody knows Epiphone. And they've shelved the brand Valley Arts. Then they may bring it back. I don't know. If you see it, it's back. If you don't see it, it's been shelved. So Valley Arts guitars. That's, so that's their conglomerate. So these are who owns who. So that's a little thing of who made who and who owns who. I'm sure there's more we can tell. If you can think of companies and you want to post in the comments, maybe I'll do some more of these if they're fun. Um, like I said, I promise this information is uh, very accurate. Um, and uh, and if you, uh, like I said, thank you for your time as always. And know your gear brands who own other gear brands. All right. Thank you.